Good afternoon everyone and welcome to today's webinar, Sun Protection in the Workplace. I'm Stephanie Murawski from WorkSafe Tasmania and I will be your moderator today. Before we start, we ask that you take a few moments to read the following slide about information received today. I will now go over a few items so you know how to participate in today's webinar. We have taken a screenshot of an example of the attendee interface. You should see something that looks like this on your computer screen in the upper right corner. You're listening in using your computer speaker system by default. If you would prefer to join over the phone, just select telephone in the audio pane and the dial-in information will be displayed. You will also have the opportunity to submit text questions to today's presentation by typing your questions into the questions pane of the control panel. You may send in your questions at any time during the webinar. Questions will be addressed at the end of today's presentation. We are also recording today's webinar. Recordings will be made available at the end of WorkSafe month on the WorkSafe Tasmania website. Also at the close of today's webinar, you will receive a survey on the presentation. We appreciate you providing us with your feedback. I would now like to introduce today's presenter, Ella French, Project Officer at Cancer Council Tasmania, to give today's webinar, Sun Protection in the Workplace. Ella works in the Cancer Prevention Team at Cancer Council Tasmania, with a specific focus in SunSmart. She has worked at Cancer Council Tasmania for four years and is passionate about health, well-being, and engaging the community for positive health behaviour outcomes. Welcome, Ella. Thanks, Stephanie. I'm excited to be taking this webinar today as a part of WorkSafe Month. So just a few points uh, before we start. I just wanted to address the fact that we know that cancer impacts a lot of people with more than nine Tasmanians diagnosed with cancer every day. Before I begin, I just want to acknowledge that there may be some of you listening who have been directly or indirectly affected by cancer. So if today's presentation raised any concerns or issues for you, please look after yourself and if you need to take a break, feel free. So just a few points to begin about Cancer Council Tasmania. So our mission is to provide high quality support services for people impacted by cancer. We invest in cancer prevention programs that educate the community about lifestyle factors that can decrease the risk of cancer. And we also fund local cancer research projects and provide a respected voice for people affected by cancer. So we are more than 90% funded through the community from events such as Relay for Life, Australia's Biggest Morning Tea, Daffodil Day, we've got our balls, breakfast, community fundraisers, donations and bequests, just to name a few. So as I mentioned at the beginning, it's um, pretty crazy to think that more than nine Tasmanians are diagnosed with cancer each day. We do know that about a third of cancers can be prevented through healthy lifestyle choices. A healthy lifestyle is also important in helping to prevent the reoccurrence of cancer. A healthy lifestyle can also help reduce the risk of things like high blood pressure, high cholesterol, type 2 diabetes, heart diseases, just to name a few. The good news is that the five-year survival rate has increased greatly for all cancers combined and is now about 70%, which in comparison to about 30 years ago was about 45%. It is, how, it is higher, however, for some of the more common cancers. As I mentioned, about a third of cancers can be prevented. Um, these are the seven ways that you can reduce your risk of cancer. So we do presentations on all of these. Um, today, of course, we're focusing on being sun smart. So just a few statistics um, to give you a bit of a picture of what skin cancer is like in Australia and Tasmania. So Australia has one of the highest rates of skin cancer in the world. We're up there with New Zealand. And about two in three Australians will be diagnosed with skin cancer by the age of 70. Melanoma in Tasmania is the fourth most common cancer for both men and women. And something you might not be aware of, but um, melanoma is actually the most common cancer in adolescents aged 15 to 29. So 
that does impact a lot of people. So why do we want to be sun smart? Well, we do know that skin cancer is highly preventable. The main cause is from overexposure to ultraviolet radiation, which I'll shorten it for UV, from the sun. Childhood and adolescence exposure to UV greatly increases the chance of developing skin cancer later in life. Cumulative exposure to UV and a number of severe sunburns, particularly during childhood, increases the risk of developing skin cancer. We do know that UV all adds up. Very few cases, like probably about less than 5%, are due to inherited genes. So we know that, that there isn't much of a familiar risk. Majority of the visible signs of ageing are the result of damage to the skin caused by UV exposure. The more time you spend unprotected in the sun, the greater your risk of skin cancer. It can have other kind of damage such as cataracts, so that, that's the main cause is from UV. I just want to highlight that um, the pictures I've put up there today, the picture of the guy is a truck driver in America and he drove for about 15 years with the sun coming on mainly the left side of his face. And as you can see from the photo that that side of his face is much more wrinkled compared to the other side. So I think that's a good indication of what UV can do, not just around the sunburn, but also increasing the risk of premature ageing and wrinkling. If you look at your own skin, you'll probably notice that um, you know, the top part of your skin that's exposed to the sun can possibly have more damage compared to the inside of your arm that doesn't see the sun. So that's sort of a way that you can sort of tell and, and notice any changes on your skin. So not all skin cancer is the same and we have, there are different types of skin cancers. So the three main types are basal cell carcinoma, squamous cell carcinoma and melanoma. So the pictures that I've shown on the screen here, um, they, it just shows examples. So skin cancers don't all look the same, but this is just an example of what each type can look like. So basal cell carcinoma grows uh, usually fairly slowly and doesn't usually spread to other parts of the body. It usually occurs on the head, neck, and sort of upper body areas. Squamous cell carcinoma is most common in areas frequently exposed to the sun, so places like your ears, um, your lips, including other parts of your face, um, your scalp, hands, arms and legs, um, and can potentially spread a little bit further than basal cell carcinoma. Melanoma is the least common of all skin cancers, interestingly. It's only sort of about 1% to 2% of all skin cancers, but possibly the one you've all heard of the most. Um, it is the one that can be potentially the most serious. Um, if recognised and treated early, it is almost always curable. If not caught early, then it may advance and spread to other parts of the body, which can be harder to treat. So just to talk a bit more about UV. So UV is a type of radiation that's produced by the sun and some artificial sources such as solarium. Uh, we now don't really have to worry about them in Australia because they are banned Australia-wide. The sun's UV is the major cause of sunburn, premature ageing, eye damage and skin damage, which I mentioned, and this, of course, can all lead to skin cancer. The World Health Organisation's UV index measures levels of UV radiation from a scale of 1 to 11 plus, which you can see here on the screen. So we recommend that the use of sun protection happens whenever the UV levels are 3 and above, so whenever they get to the yellow zone and above. Unless you're near highly reflective surfaces such as snow or if you're outside for extended periods, which most of you probably are, then sun protection is required all year round. Just something that I do want to highlight is that UV can't be seen or felt. So, of course, we can see the sun's light and we can feel the sun's warmth, which is heat or infrared radiation, but we can't sense, we can't see or feel UV, so we won't know it's damaged our skin possibly. So it's really important that you're aware of when the sun protection times are to use it. It's something that it's quite a common myth, but I do hear people say a fair bit that oh, I can feel myself getting sunburned, but you can't feel yourself getting sunburned because you can't actually feel UV. 
So it's actually just the heat that you're feeling. So I'm just going to play you a video now just to highlight a bit more about UV. You spend more time in the sun than you think. Anywhere you go, UV from the sun will damage unprotected skin. And it just keeps adding up. The more time you spend unprotected in the sun, the greater the risk of cancer. And you'll never know when your number is up. I think the video there um, highlights the point quite well about the fact that UV all adds up. It's that cumulative damage, but also incidental exposure. So it's not just when you're going out to take washing on the line or walking to your car, that um, it, it's just all different times that UV can all add up. So because you can't see or feel UV and you need to know when to use sun protection, one of the good ways to do that is through our SunSmart app. So that can be downloaded on any smartphone. Um, it's a great way to find out when the UV levels are for the day. So it will tell you what the UV is currently, the max UV and also the sun protection times. Um, it can also alert you, like send alerts to your phone as to when the sun protection times will be. Otherwise, you can access the UV through newspaper or through our website, www.cancertas.org.au. There are different factors that affect UV. Um, so one of those is time of day. So UV levels are greatest when the sun is highest in the sky. So this occurs during the middle of the day. So that's when, in, in particular, care needs to be taken. So UV levels are not necessarily related to temperature. So something to think about is um, it's not just about when it's hot or when it's cold. You know, think about the actual UV. Time of year, so UV levels do vary throughout the country. In Tasmania, our UV levels are three and above from the beginning of September through to the end of April, so not just in the summer months. Sun protection, that's when sun protection is required for the general population. Um, of course, if, you're, if you are an outdoor worker, which I'm assuming most of you are, um, you do need to use sun protection all year round because you are exposed to a lot more UV. Cloud cover, so on lightly overcast days, UV levels could still be similar to that of a cloud-free day. Um, if there is heavy cloud, then that can reduce UV. Reflectivity, so some surfaces do reflect UV. Um, smooth, sort of hard surfaces will reflect UV more than rough surfaces. So just something to, to keep in mind. Um, I know that a, a guy told me a story once that he was on his boat and he was sitting on the edge of the boat with his feet dangling over the water and he got very, very burnt on the bottom of his feet because the water reflected off onto his feet. So just be aware of the fact that, that reflectivity is a big factor. Um, our proximity to the equator is a big one. So um, the top of Australia has higher UV levels than us down here. Okay, so as I mentioned before, that UV and temperature aren't related. So on an overcast day in summer, we can have similar UV levels as a warm and sunny day. So even if it is 30 degrees outside versus an 18 degree day, it's really important to think about the fact that UV levels can be the same. And I think especially here in Tasmania, that that is a big thing. People think that it's it's cooler down here, so the UV isn't as high, but it, it can be. So um, just keep that in mind. But interestingly as well, that um, if it's windy and you get a red face, that that's actually sunburn and not windburn. So there's actually no such thing as windburn. So it is important that just to be aware of the, the temperature versus UV.
So outdoor workers do receive in Australia about three times more sun exposure than indoor workers. So that means that you do have an increased risk of skin damage and therefore skin cancer. Outdoor workers' risk of squamous cell carcinoma is nearly double that of indoor workers and basal cell carcinoma is increased by almost 1.5 times. It is estimated that about 200 melanomas and 34,000 non-melanoma skin cancers per year are due to occupation exposure. As we've talked about, that it's not necessarily just through direct sun exposure, but it can be via reflection of surfaces or scattering of UV through the atmosphere. So I'm just going to play another video now about an, in, an outdoor worker, Ron. Around about 2012, when I was down the beach, I noticed that this mole in particular was just getting a little bit bigger and started to, to change a little bit. Unfortunately, you get busy, family, work, all those sort of things, and um, you tend to put things off, which is not a good thing. Melanoma is such a varying thing that my stage went from stage two straight to stage, stage four. It transgressed pretty quickly um, to, my, to my lung, um, and so therefore it became pretty serious. I've always been one to wear sunscreen anyway, um, but I guess in my situation with my history is that I was outside a lot especially in my youth. I was outdoors the whole time. I was surfing, I was playing tennis, I was playing cricket, uh, and I was working outdoors. So there's seven days a week that I was outdoors. I've changed um, some of my clothing and uniform, and if I need to use a sunscreen, well then I do. But if I can use a long sleeve shirt that's, that's breathable and able to wear, you know, even in a sunny, hot, warm day like today, then uh, that, that's much better. The message to my colleagues was, yep, it can happen to you, it's happened to me. Uh, I've worked in this industry, you're working in this industry. The risks are high because of what we have to do to complete our work. Start doing these things. The, the company itself gives you sunscreen, it's giving you a hat, um, but you need to take it on your onus yourself to to make sure that you're doing the right thing. They said to me later on, oh, you look normal, you look fantastic. I said, yeah, I said, that's, that's melanoma. It, it's, a, it's a black cancer. It hides and it sits there and then whammo, it gets you. Skin cancer can happen to you. You need to make, start making those changes now to minimise those risks um, and start changing your attitude a little bit now um, or a lot now, <laughs> um, so that you don't develop those problems later on in life. So I hope you found Ron's story interesting, just a little bit of an insight of someone who has been an outdoor worker. So as you're probably all aware that UV is a work health and safety issue. When you think about it, I mean, you wouldn't wear thongs to work or weld without a mask. So working outside without sun protection when the UV is serene above is a health and safety risk as well. It's not too different from other health and safety issues, um, with the main difference being that most workplace injuries are immediate, unlike UV, which can cause the disease to develop over time. So using sun protection to avoid UV is like using sun protective here to avoid asbestos, which can cause cancer later in life. Under the Work Health and Safety Act, both employers and employees have a duty of care to reduce the risk of all types of injury and disease in the workplace. So employers' main responsibilities are to provide protective equipment, safe plans and systems of work, providing adequate information, instruction, training and supervision. As employees, they need to cooperate with their employers, 
comply with instructions and not engage in risk-taking behaviour. So it really is the responsibility on everyone to reduce their cancer risk. UV Daily is a great website for employees to check out to find a variety of sun protection information. It's got some really great humorous videos as well as some good information. So keep that on your radar to look out for. So I'm hoping you all know the five ways to protect your skin. Um, I'm sure you've seen in previous years the Slip Stop Slap Seek and Slide TV ad with our mate Sid the Seagull who's our Sun Smart mascot. But in case you don't, I will go through the five of them now. So clothing, we want to make sure that we slip on as much clothing as possible to cover our skin. So not all fabric is equal. Um, ideally, we want to look for clothing that has a UPF or ultraviolet protection factor rating. So that sort of shows how much UV will pass through unstretched dry material. So any fabric rated above UPF 15 provides good protection compared to UPF 50 plus, which is ideally recommended. So sun protective clothing provides protection by absorbing and reflecting UV. Um, so it will hit the surface of the fabric and then it won't be able to pass through. So tighter um, knitted or woven fabric is really good. Um, lightweight natural fabrics such as linen, cotton or hemp is great because it will also keep you cooler as well as protect you. Layering is also a good option to prevent UV getting through. Of course, when it's warmer weather, that's not exactly ideal. Um, but it's important to make sure at least your shoulders are covered, um, that you have collars to protect your neck. As I don't know if you remember me saying earlier, but one of the most common areas for skin cancers to occur is, is on your face and neck. So as long as you can cover that area, that's the main thing. So hats, so we really want to protect the face, neck and ears. Um, caps or visors really aren't ideal because they don't protect your face, neck and ears. Um, so we've got broad brimmed, bucket or legionnaire style hats. Um, you can get hard hat attachments, which has got the legionnaire's flap that you can attach or you could wear a hat underneath. Sunglasses, so these are an important sun protection strategy as I mentioned because cataracts and eye damage can be from overexposure to UV. So really would encourage you to use them. Um, ones that are close fitting, um, wrap around and that cover as much of the eye as possible, especially the side of your eye. Um, make sure that they meet our Australian standards and are polarised. Thick shade. So shade is a practical, sort of user-friendly, I suppose, form of sun protection. Um, it can create, obviously, cool spaces as well as protect you from UV. Um, this can obviously be difficult if you're working outdoors in spaces that aren't covered, but if you can make sure that you take breaks in the shade or try and rotate jobs as much as possible, so then you can take turns of being outside of the direct UV. Sunscreen. So I've left, left this last um, deliberately because we really want this to be your last line of defence, only using it in, in areas that aren't covered by clothing as that's sort of the ideal situation. So what we do recommend is using SPF 30 plus or higher and for it to be water resistant and a broad spectrum sunscreen. So broad spectrum means that it protects you against UVA and UVB which are the two main forms of UV. Sunscreen should ideally be applied 20 minutes before going outdoors. Um, that will actually give it time to work properly. Regardless of level of water resistance, sunscreen needs to be applied every two hours or after swimming, heavy sweating or towel drying. Because if, you, if you're drying your skin, then usually you're rubbing off sunscreen. When applying sunscreen, you need to apply at least one teaspoon per limb, one for the front of the body, one for the back, one for the head. Um, about a full body application will be about 35 mils or 7 teaspoons. So it's important to, to reapply and to apply enough sunscreen because we found that about 85% of Australians don't apply enough sunscreen. It really should be stored in a cool and dry place and the expiry date needs to be monitored. Um, in particular, a good sunscreen for outdoor workers is our Cancer Cancer Work sunscreen. It's a dry touch one, so dirt doesn't stick to your skin if you're outdoors sort of working in a, in a more dirty environment. 
So obviously prevention is ideal, um, but early detection is, is just as important really and the majority of skin cancers can be successfully treated if found early. So everyone really needs to become familiar with their skin. It's important to get to know your skin so you know what's normal for you and so that changes can be quickly noticed. Crucial to check all of your skin, not just unexposed areas. I've heard of different cases of people that have had skin cancers under their arms, under their feet. I think it was Bob Marley that had it under his big toe. So important to check all areas of your skin. Skin cancer is often visible but rarely painful, so usually it can be fairly easy to spot in the early stages. Um, don't just rely on an annual skin check to detect any spots. Self-check as regularly as you can. You need to look for any change in shape, size or colour of a spot or the development of a new spot. If any of these changes occur, then please go and visit your doctor. The image that I have on the screen on the right shows different examples between normal spots, which are the spots on the right, versus spots that have turned cancerous on the left. Now obviously these are just examples and they can look like many different types. To check your body, it's important that you undress and stand in a spot with good light. Make sure you use a large mirror and a smaller mirror, a handheld mirror to check your back and your legs. Don't forget to use a comb to go through your hair to feel for any lumps or bumps on your scalp. And as I mentioned, make sure you check everywhere. So armpits, you know, legs, ears, eyelids, everywhere. And if you feel comfortable, then maybe ask a friend or family member to check some areas like your back if you can't see as well. I'm just going to play um, another video now just for some tips to do before you go and get a skin check. Getting your kit off in front of your doctor can be a little bit intimidating, but it's important that you let your doctor examine your whole body because skin cancer can appear anywhere. When you're booking the appointment, let your receptionist know that you're after a full body skin exam. It means you'll get the time that you need. This is not the time for layers, people. Choose clothes that are easy to get on and off. If it makes you feel uncomfortable, get your doctor to check your upper half first and then your lower half, just so you don't have to stand there in your birthday suit too long. Unless you're a nudist, in which case, it's time to party. <laughs> oh yeah! If you have a spot that your doctor is concerned about, they might refer you to a specialist like a dermatologist or a surgeon. Ask your doctor what to expect and don't be afraid to ask for a second opinion if you're still unsure. The best way to monitor them is to take photos of them. Put them on Instagram. Give them their own hashtag. Put a Valencia filter on them. And if you see any changes in your spots, Go and consult your doctor. So I think that's a really good video just to highlight some things you might experience when going to your doctor. So really making sure that you're, you're prepared when you do go for a skin check. So the last things I just want to leave you with and the, the two laughing points is that please remember to use the five sun protection measures to protect against UV. At least try to use two or three of them at a minimum. And check your skin regularly and go to your GP if you notice anything unusual. So thank you very much for listening today. Um, hopefully you learnt something new and feel free to get in touch if you would like any extra resources from today. Thank you. Thank you, Ella. So we will now answer any questions um, to today's webinar. So please, you can submit your questions to the questions pane uh, in the attendee control panel. So the first question that has come through, Ella, um, our safety committee have been trying to identify corporate regulatory requirements for UV sun exposure and protection. While we're able to identify some recommendations from some locations, including Cancer Council, there doesn't appear to be clear exposure limits or protections required of workplaces. Is there any guidance available? We're not overly concerned about potential 
litigants in future but much more so about protecting our people and it's proving very difficult to ensure any SunSmart protection policy ensures adequate protection. Yeah sure so um, I mean there is the Work Health and Safety Act um, that do have different roles and responsibilities but we do have a new um, Sun Protection and Workplace booklet that would be a really good guide um, that you could pass in your details that I can send you. It has a range of different things um, that based on legislation um, and Cancer Council nationally what our views are and it also has templates for policies, um, exposure limits that you were talking about. Um, so I think that could be a resource that would be useful. Um, so yes, yeah, if you're wanting to pass on your details I'm more than happy to, to give you a booklet. Um, if you are based in Launceston, I am attending um, WorkSafe Tasmanian's Health Expo on Wednesday and I will be there with those booklets as well. All right, thank you Ella. So if anyone does have any questions after the webinar, um, there is a, a feedback form that will come to you in a day's time and that has my email address on it. So if you would like to contact uh, Ella directly, if you send me an email or as Ella mentioned, uh, Cancer Council will be at the Work Safer Expo on Wednesday in Launceston at the Albert Hall as well. So there is still time to send through any other questions that you may have uh, for Ella in regards to skin protection. So a question that has come through Ella, is most damage done in childhood? Um, so it's a combination. So childhood and adolescence is is a big time where um, skin cancer can develop later on in life. Um, so some particular type of skin cancers are more linked to childhood and adolescence exposure, but other skin cancers are linked to that cumulative exposure that adds up over the years. So <laughs> hard to say, but it's a combination of both, really. Okay. Thanks, Ella. So we'll start to wrap up, but as I said, if there, if anyone else would like to send Ella through a question, by all means, <laughs> while we, um, we come to the end of today's webinar. So thank you, Ella, from Cancer Council Tasmania for today's webinar, Sun Protection in the Workplace. There is still time to register for other WorkSafe Month uh, webinars and we will have our last webinar running at the end of WorkSafe Month on the 31st of October. So please do head to the WorkSafe Tas Month website, worksafetasmonth.com.au to have a look at what other um, webinars and events that we have happening up until the end of October. A question has come through Ella. So if a business puts all protections in place to ensure on-site workers are able to access protection against UV and if workers don't use this properly, what responsibility does the business have beyond this? Yeah, it's a good question. And look, if a business is putting all sun protections possible in place, then you really can't do much more because it's, like I was saying, it's responsibility of both in both employers and employees. If employees aren't complying, then that is that is on them and, and not anything more you can do about it. So, you know, if you make sure that you have appropriate clothing, you've got the glassware, the hats, you've got sunscreen that is accessible for all employees, then you really can't do much more than that. And it's just really important that employees are aware that all those uh, measures are available for them, that they have adequate tra training and that is sort of where your, your responsibility ends and it can be really, really tricky because you can sometimes do everything you think possible and not everyone will comply but as long as you have all the measures in place then, then it's really that's where, that's where it ends for you. Thank you Ella. So also at the close of today's webinar, um, everyone who attended today will receive a survey 
on the presentation and we do appreciate your feedback. So on behalf of WorkSafe Tasmania and today's webinar presenter, Ella French from Cancer Council Tasmania, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Ella. Thank you.